Happy Friday. So happy to be with you. Welcome. Good evening, everyone. Let's just begin in worship. Thank you for joining. Welcome. Happy Friday. Welcome, Katie. We're going to begin in worship. I hope you had a great week full of the Holy Spirit. Full of God, full of grace, full of anointing, full of power. Thank you, Jesus, for this word that we will be delivering to your people on this beautiful Friday evening. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Just lift your hands high with me. Surrender all. Surrender all, no matter what happened this week. Right now, we're going to let it all go and focus on God. We're going to focus on God. Thank you, Jesus. I absolutely love this instrumental that I discovered today. I don't know if any of you heard of it, but it is so touching. And as I was developing the word for you with the Holy Spirit this evening, this was one of the songs that was on the playlist that just happened to come up. And I was like, ooh, this is a great word. This is a great uh, song for the word today. And so we're just going to flow in this in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for your glory. Thank you. Welcome, welcome. Yes. Welcome. Good vibes, good energy. I wish to impart to you just a warmth in your heart, a soundness in your mind, a peace in your spirit. In the name of Jesus. We're going to start the word in just a little bit, but right now, just let the Holy Spirit minister to your heart. Welcome, welcome. Oh, we worship you. Thank you, Jesus. Hands held high, hands held high. Welcome. As you can see in the title, today's message is Cast No Stone. Cast No Stone. Cast No Stone. We're going to be focusing on John chapter 8. So if you have your Bible, go ahead and take out John chapter 8. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lifting all hands high. Surrender all. Surrender all. If you've been feeling any emotions of uh, depression, of um, sadness, of um, just a disruption in your soul, this message is for you. If you know someone who's been feeling that way, this message is for you. So that you can impart this word to them in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Cast no stone. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for the power. Thank you, Jesus, for the 
fire of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Woo, that was powerful. So I'm going to replay that and then we're going to dive right in. So, the purpose of this teaching is to shed light on the voice and perspective of the abuser, of the accuser, of Satan. Oftentimes, Satan's perspective, or even your abuser's perspective in your life, can become your own if you are not careful. So how other people judge you, and how they treat you, how they think about you, how Satan deceives you and torments you in your mind, those stones can become your own stones if you're not careful and you, you don't identify that they're just deceitful stones, all right? So we are going to uproot this implantation of these thoughts in your mind that come from the deceiver in the name of Jesus. Thank you so much. So that you will never, ever, ever, ever after this broadcast judge or abuse yourself like Satan or the people that Satan uses in your life. I can see somebody's already feeling this message. I see those hearts and I, my heart goes directly to you. Directly to you. Thank you, Jesus. So today, as I was thinking about this word, God directed me. This is how God works. I was like, okay, God, I'm, I'm focused. You know, we're going to do this today. What are we going to talk about, Jesus? God will immediately give me a scripture. And the scripture was, and, and it won't come in necessarily the words. I'll have to go and research it. I have to go and look it up. And so God said, John chapter 8, verse 9. John chapter 8, verse 9. And so what was happening in John chapter 8 was that there was a woman that was brought to Mount Olive where Jesus was. And this, this, this was the Jews that were bringing this woman. And they were like, you know, this woman was caught in the act of adultery. And they thought that she should be stoned. And so Jesus was drawing on the ground in his normal calm fashion. <laughs> and he ignored him at first. But then they kept going. And he turned around and he looked at them. And he said, let the person who is sinless cast the first stone. Many of you have heard this story. But there's a powerful revelation that I received with this story and it's this other people's stones can become stones that you throw at yourself and we don't want that and what do those stones look like well before i even talk about what the stones look like let's look exactly at let's look at exactly what the text says so that's the context of the story so it says in John chapter 8, verse 9, which is what the Holy Spirit told us we needed to meditate on today, it says, in which they heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, went out one by one, beginning at the eldest, even unto the last, and Jesus was left alone and the woman standing in the midst. So no one could throw a stone at her. No one. They were like, we're all sinful. So how are we to judge? How are we to throw stones? But the implantation of that judgment and accusation could stay in the woman's heart and it can stay in your heart. And we don't want that. So what happens when the enemy casts stones at you? And what happens when those stones become your own? You get into a deep depression. How many of you are in a deep depression right now? Like, honestly, it's that time of year we're not seeing a whole lot of sun. How many of you can honestly say that you are feeling depressed? Or how many of you have mood swings or paranoia or an unreasonable mindset of fear? People 
people have suicidal thoughts based on this demonic torment and these stones that are being thrown at them and that are becoming their own stones. People feel a sense of denial. Being extremely overwhelmed is another thing that can come up as you are judging yourself and abusing and accusing yourself. Taking those things from Satan and his demons. You can also feel a sense of dissociation and numbness too. So if you identify with any of these, I really want you to pay attention to what God is revealing in this message. First of all, these are not your thoughts. These are not holy thoughts. These thoughts do not come from God. And in the Bible, it says, I'm going to tell you exactly what it says, and this is powerful. It says there is no truth in the devil. So if you're feeling a uh, deep depression or mood swings based on reoccurring thoughts, there is no truth in the devil. Jesus says it himself in John chapter 8. There's no truth. So your own torment is based on lies. It's a deception. Your mood swings and your pain is based on a lie. Right there, some of you may be able to feel a sense of relief in just knowing that there is the foundation of what I'm feeling that's making me feel so unbalanced. It's not rooted in truth. So why am I even feeling this way? Jesus is the truth. Wholeness is the truth. Life is the truth. Not the trauma and the, and the death and the, you know, some people, I, you know, I even know people who have been raped and, and constantly replay these thoughts in their minds of the torment, of the torment. Jesus also says that if a man keeps my saying, so if you remember scriptures, no matter what the devil comes at you with, if you remember God's scriptures, Jesus says, if a man keeps my saying, he shall never taste of death. He shall never taste of death. Never. And in the dimension that we live in, this earth, there's a whole lot of deathly energy. There's a whole lot of good energy, but we live in a world of duality. And so if there is, there's life here on earth and there's death here on earth. And so Jesus is telling you, keep my sayings and my words of life in your heart so that, so that you may taste no death. And the result of tasting too much death, and when I say tasting, I mean like spiritually tasting, I mean really taking in um, feelings of depression come from experiencing too much death, too much of a death of spirit. That's powerful. That's powerful. It's too much. Now, on the flip side of death is life and light. And so Jesus also says in John chapter 8, verse 12, you can find all these scriptures from today in John chapter 8. So if you want to, again, open up your Bible and start to read that particular chapter for the first time or again, you will see the richness that God is trying to impart to you in that no stone comes from Christ, essentially. Ju you know, judgment, there's an appropriate time for judgment, but a stone and abuse, that's not the torment, that's not coming from God. Those are not God thoughts. So hopefully you will begin to remove those thoughts from your mind. Now, let's talk about the devil's tactics. Because, you know, we like to reveal the devil's tactics so that you are not um, in a position where you are um, unaware. You don't have knowledge in order to overcome these tactics. So the devil wants to do the following things to you. He wants to overwhelm you with dark dark thoughts that lead to self-punishment. How many of you would say that you self-punish? And I'm gonna to reveal to you in this message one way that I've discovered that I self-punish, which is not a good thing, all right? The self-punishment, this, this is what the enemy wants you to do. I mean, just imagine him taking, you're taking work off of his plate. So if he gets somebody to throw a stone at you, 
And then in the spirit realm, you begin to take on the perspective of the stone thrower. Then all of a sudden, you're the one tormenting and beating up yourself and doing the devil's work for him in your life. That's a revelation. You don't want to ever, ever do that to yourself. And sometimes people even unknowingly do it because it's just a habit. It's just, it's just a habit. It's like they be, you know, it's possible to become desensitized to the stones that are being thrown from other people and the ones that you are directing at yourself. So we need to shed light on this process. Now, by overwhelming you with dark thoughts, Satan can compel you to take negative actions against yourself. And this is what often happens with people um, as I was doing research, and I, this is definitely um, real, even though it, it's, it doesn't feel good to talk about it, but it's something that needs to be talked about. Um, people who go through the act of suicide, and some of you may even know people who have committed suicide, it's, a, it's Satan compelling them, like, hey, this is going wrong, this is going wrong. And then all of a sudden, all of those thoughts from the enemy are coming in a person's mind. They go from being thoughts to causing a person to feel compelled to take the action of taking their own life. Whereas if you are a person that's in an individual's life who's going through depression and who knows they're having tormented thoughts, and you're a person that can say, hey, these thoughts do not belong to God. These thoughts are the devil. The devil, are, the devil is trying to compel you to take action in your own life that is against God's will, you can be the person to intercede and save a person's life. It could be you. It could be you. Another thing that the devil wants to do is um, abuse yourself physically with drugs and alcohol and other things to release tension and traumatic thoughts. And so drugs and alcohol can become a means to um, kind of get you out of the tormenting zone, even if just for a little bit. Other people use pain. Um, I, I know people who have self-afflicted, self-afflicted like wounds on themselves in order to um, cancel out the background noise and ease this, this place of numbness. And so um, if you know people like that in your life, talk to them about what's happening in their lives and try to help them break that cycle. Um, another thing that the enemy can do to you is cause you to not want to feel anything. And this is something that um, I've gone through personally. Um, and it's not that I've gone through something like super, super traumatic, but um, just even in relationships, like sometimes you can be in a position where you're like, I don't want to feel anything. Like, don't mess with me. Like, <laughs> leave me alone. Um, huh? Who? Oh, <laughs> thank you. Um, but yeah, like people go through certain situations or heartbreak in relationships and may not even want to feel again. But that's the enemy. That is the enemy. To not want you to find divine connection again. So avoiding feelings is another tactic of the devil. I want to make that extremely clear. And that's something that um, I, in, in preparing this word for you, <laughs> that was even revealed to me like, whoa, wait a minute, this is me. <laughs> so the the takeaway with this one is that we want to identify and focus on God thoughts God's thoughts are divine connection thoughts they are healthy thoughts they are I don't want those drugs I don't want to harm myself I don't want to let anybody else harm me I'm not going to turn their perspective into a perspective of my own and how I see myself this is like chopping off the cord of the devil in your life and though that type of energy can be so easily um, intertwined in your life, and it can happen so subtly, so subtly. So today we are shedding light on that. All right, so another thing that the enemy wants you to do 
is to stop you from expressing your own pain. I remember I had a child tell me, um, one of one of my girls at my school, I remember she said something like, uh, you know, I just want to express myself, but I don't have the words. I, I just really don't have the words. And so that's a real problem that the enemy capitalizes on. If you're not in a position where you want to talk about your pain or have the words to talk about your pain, then the pain stays. There's power in words and we can't transmute pain into power and pain into pleasure unless we know how to express our feelings about it so that they can be released. So do not let the enemy take away your own self-expressing power. Express your feelings in the name of Jesus. Now another thing, um, that can happen, I'm gonna turn this off for a moment. Another thing that can happen is that um, Satan will cause you to use curse words. Now these are, in, hello, these are ineffective means of communicating your own pain. And so if you're feeling a certain way, you don't want to um, be utilizing curse words and then even it's not, it, don't, it doesn't only uh, stop at curse words. When people don't know how to express their pain, they often choose physical actions that are aggressive. And so that's another tactic of the devil. You don't want to put yourself in a position where you're not um, comfortable expressing and verbalizing yourself. Some people express themselves through music. Some people express their pain through writing. That's perfectly fine, but express it in a positive way. Okay? If you don't, it'll just lead to more pain. Now, uh, Satan will also try to convince you that your emotions are too overwhelming and dark to communicate. Now, this is false. Satan will cause you to isolate yourself, to be with your dark thoughts alone so that they can self-replicate and replicate with him rather than giving you the revelation that there is somebody out here on the earth that can handle those emotions with you that can listen to you, that someone, someone has an anointing to be patient and strong with you as you communicate how you feel and what you are thinking about even doing to yourself. Like, we really don't talk about these things together in a public platform on social media, but it needs to be done because people are not living their best life because they are being trapped by the devil with their own tormenting thoughts. I don't know how to express this. Who do I even go to to express it? I'll oh, forget it. I'll just drink. I'll just fight. I'll just not, you know, you see kids in school. I'll just sit here and not do my work. I'll just, all these other behaviors that cause a storm. And if we can just talk about it, and go to God's word about it, then it can be prevented. So you want to use words that heal your heart, not stagnate your heart in the name of Jesus. So remember, there's no truth in the devil. Jesus says that in John chapter eight, verse 44, if a man keeps my saying, he shall never taste of death. John chapter eight, verse 52. Keep sayings of God in your heart. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me is one of my favorite, favorite things to come to. You can break the chains of the devil. You do not have to be depressed. You do not have to have mood swings, paranoia, suicidal thoughts. You don't have to have these things because you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Jesus is the light of the world. And if you focus on God enough through your pain and through your darkness, you will see the light. You will see the light. And you want to always ask yourself on a daily basis, whose truth am I going to operate in? Am I going to operate in the truth of those who throw stones at me? Or am I going to operate in the truth of God who saved me? Whose truth? 
Who's true? So with that said, I want to leave you with that word. I want you to develop an anointing for understanding the emotions that people are carrying so that you may be able to be an instrument for God in those people's lives. You never know just by reading a facial expression, the type of harm that you can literally stop in a person's life by just giving them some attention, by just opening up the door and just saying, hey, what are you going through? I noticed that your energy has been off. Have you been, have you been praying? Have you been in scripture? Develop an anointing for being sensitive to other people's emotions so that they can stop throwing stones at themselves. And you never want to be the person to throw the stone. The Bible talks about that. You, if you judge, you shall be judged. That's not, that's not on us. So love one another. Be at peace. Cast no stone. Lift people up. I kid you not, I was, um, this was about 30 days ago. I was at work. Um, I was I was at work, but I was on a break. And um, there was someone who told me that she had thought about jumping, you know, jumping off a building. And I remember sitting down and that thought crossed my mind. And all of a sudden, it was like three minutes, two to three minutes later, after I was like, man, because I was, I was in an environment where she had lived. And so I was like, man, I remember when she said that. And of course, I would never reveal who the person is because that's just not who I am. But God put the thought in my mind like, man, remember when she said that she was thinking about jumping off of a building? And this is somebody that you wouldn't think would say something like that. You know, like just in, in everyday functioning. And this is, this is a word to reveal that you never know what's in a person's heart. You just never know. And so two to three minutes later, I go to get some coffee before I head back to work. And um, they're all, fr they're frantic. They're running around and I'm like, what's going on? And they were like, somebody just jumped off the building. And this is the exact same building that, I was telling you that this person that told me that they were considering jumping from, literally, I had the thought and a person would reportedly jump. You can look it up. Um, but these things happen because the devil is tormenting people in their mind and in their spirit. And these people have no one to sit down and talk to or, or, or feel like they have no one to sit down and talk to, to try to transmute these feelings. And, that, and it's a shame. Like with 7 billion people on earth, we have people committing suicide? But it happens. So people who, who are functioning are in corporate America or who appear to be functioning, they're with us. There is a read. This is not a very popular topic. This is not about prosperity and how God is going to bless you and give you all this abundance. God was like, no, I need you to talk about John chapter 8, verse 9. And then immediately the revelation was people are throwing, the, the devil is um, causing people to transmute his stones into their own stones. And that is causing people to feel the depression, to feel the suicide, to, to self-afflict, to allow abuse to happen in their life. This needs to be talked about. This grieves God is what God is telling me right now. Grieves God. And it is selfish for us to turn a blind eye to the dark things that other people are going through. It's selfish. So after that happened, after I had that experience where God gave me the thought, remember when this person said they were going to jump off this particular building that you're facing right now? Three minutes later, I go to get coffee and they're like, this person jumped. God had also shown me that week a, per, uh, um, a bird I was teaching and I had a a lot of students in the classroom, but I had this one uh, student who was beside me facing the window. We both saw a bird just 
come right down. It was like God was just showing me like falling, falling, death, things of that nature. And I brought it up to my girls um, at school. And I was just like, hey, you know, things have been happening this week, earlier today, like at lunch, this just happened to me. Like we need to talk about suicide. And it just turned into this whole big conversation about, you know, how they were feeling and the dark thoughts they have. And so um, even if you have kids or if you have nieces and nephews, these types of conversations need to be happening. A safe space for these conversations need to be happening because just like God revealed that to me twice, very peculiarly, very distinctly, I remember the bird falling from the, from because I work in a very large um, um, story building. Seeing that bird fall and then uh, hearing about that person jumping from the same building as God had revealed that or reminded me of that thought just was like, wow. And so that prompted the conversation, that prompted the healing of spirits. And so do it, do it. I, I don't care if it's only one of you, Hopefully, it's several of you who, who comes through this building, uh, this building, uh, this live broadcast, either today or in the future. Ask people, how are you feeling? I noticed this. This person said this about you. How did this impact you? Is there anything I can do? Offer a compliment. Offer a scripture. Offer a smile. Offer a hug. Just give the love of God. Give the love of God because. The enemy and his one third of fallen angels are working very hard against the will of God. And what God is telling you right now is that he is tired and he does not want to lose more souls to the tormenting of the devil. And it could even be yours. And when I talk about losing lives, I'm not just talking about suicide. Like that's extreme. I'm talking about losing your life because you're in a relationship where a person is abusing you and they've been abusing you, whether it's physical abuse or mental e abuse, emotional abuse. You are, you are experiencing death. That's death. That's not life. That's not Jesus. So as you are, and that's why you may feel dead. I'm feeling, I, Holy Spirit just told me that's why you may be feeling dead on the inside because you are experiencing death through the abuse and the stones that are being thrown at you and those that you've taken on and thrown at yourself because you're allowing the abuse to happen. So now their perspective has become your own perspective. I deserve this. This is what I want. This is what's best for me. I'm going to do it for the kids. I'm going to stay right here. I can do it. I've done it this long. There's a saying that some people say, um, the devil you know is better than the devil you don't know. Do you know how many people are experiencing abuse based on that belief? Based on that belief. You don't want to know devils. <laughs> You don't want them talking to you. You want to identify what they say. If it doesn't bring you peace, it's from the devil. God will give you a, potentially give you an assignment or a task to do that may make you fearful, but there will be a supernatural peace about it because you know it's the will of God. So if there's something going on in your life and you know that you don't have peace about it, if there's a stone that you're casting on yourself or someone's casting on you and it feels heavy, it feels bad, that is not of God. So you don't want to know devils. The devil you know is better than the devil you don't know. We need to scratch that completely. Completely. It is possible to live this life and not move with devils not operate with devils in your personal life is possible and i want you to know that i want you to know that in the name of jesus i want you to know that in the name of jesus you do not have to move with devils 
Not at all. Some people get so familiar with devils that they forget that they're devils is what God just told me. You're so used to seeing this person face in human form that you think they're normal, but they are literally operating as the devil in your life. And it's just, oh, that's just Tim. That's just Susie. That's just Johnny. That's just Joe. That's just Rachel. That's just, that's the devil operating in that person throwing stones at you, causing you to abuse yourself. We have to be clear so that we can break free. There is life for you without the enemy. I want you to know that. I want you to breathe that. I want you to feel that in your very, very spirit. You don't have to move with devils in this life at all, at all. I'm convinced because I know the scripture. I see the scripture. I live the scripture. And if you wanna know it too, take out your Bible. John chapter eight, look at verse 44, 52, 12. John chapter eight, 44, 52, 12. You never, ever have to settle for an enemy in your life. Be alone. Clear every stone in your life before you allow yourself to be put in a place of abuse. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Think about, God is telling me to tell you, think about yourself as a baby sometimes we get older and we, we get we get a little muscle <laughs> and we start thinking we can take stuff oh I could take it oh I could deal with that would a baby deal with that you are fragile somewhere on the inside of you I I see that's real I I <laughs> there are others that have that same problem. Someone on Periscope is saying that they're a Christian, but they're a sex addict. That's a torment. That's a stone being thrown at you in your mind to keep you in an isolated place, a place where you are potentially experiencing um, sexual intimacy or sexual satisfaction or, or seeing images. That's th Those are demonic images, pornography. And I don't know if you're dealing with pornography, but... That all of that is in the realm of the in the realm of the demonic. It's not healthy. It's not. And so, what I would do if I was in your position, if I knew someone in your position, was to try to abstain, even if it's just for a day. I don't know how severe your case is. You're talking about uh, sex addiction, and that is very much a part of this topic because that's one way that the enemy torments people. And it can be rooted from uh, sexual abuse from a very young age. Um, it can be rooted in just seeing a wrong image. Okay. You Okay. So you stopped that, but you still... Okay. And I don't know if it's frequent. I don't, I don't know what your particular situation is. But just know that that in and of itself, I wouldn't say is a demonic thing, but if it's not balanced, then yes. Okay. Amen. Anything that is not in a state of balance is coming from the enemy. I had a conversation um, and it was about the fact that you can operate in perfection moment to moment. Moment to moment, and you may not be perfect all the time, but moment to moment, we should always strive to operate in the perfection of Christ because we live in a world of duality. And so if it's, if it's possible to not be perfect, then it's possible to be perfect, moment to moment. And so when it comes to stones, 
you can live a perfect stoneless life. You don't have to throw stones at yourself. You don't have to. No. It's like when I have conversation with people, conversations with people about the idea of a righteous life or a, uh, a perfected life, moment to moment, I'm not saying you're going to be perfect all the time, but moment to moment, it's almost like it's not possible. But it's very possible to be imperfect, but it's not possible to be perfect. I'm here to tell you, moment to moment, it is possible to operate in the perfection of Christ. Period. And if you need science, if you need a revelation based on just what you see, you see light, you see day, you see male, you see female, you see uh, babies, you see elderly, you see opposites. If you see imperfection, then automatically see perfection and strive for that and know that it's possible for you and it's possible for other people. And so I feel the sense of communicating right now, if you're isolating yourself from people because you feel like you can't find that perfect peace or perfect relationship or perfect bond, know that perfection can exist moment to moment in Christ. If you are focusing on the sayings of Christ as God revealed to us in John chapter 8. If you are allowing that to be your foundation rather than the stones of the enemy to be your foundation. You can operate in the perfection of Christ on a moment to moment basis. On a moment to moment basis. It all comes down to decision and knowing the word of God in your mind and planting it in your heart. Living a life perfected in Christ is possible for you. You do not have to make room for abuse, whether it comes from an external source or an external source. You don't have to. Once again, sponsored by Root Okay. Look, the devil trying to mess up our flow. <laughs> I love the song, I love. I belong to you. Hey, Corey. I see some of my family joining on here. And so what else? Is there any area? Let's let's talk about it. Let's express it. Because remember, one of the enemy's tactics to keep you in a thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. One of the devil's tactics to keep you in a place of torment and being stoned is preventing you from communicating your pain to other people. I don't give you a secret. One of the, and I've seen this in my life, and that's how I know it's a, it's a spiritual secret that works. Wow. God wants me to tell you that when you tell someone about a problem that you have, you open up the spiritual realm to get that problem solved. Now that might sound simple, like of course a closed mouth doesn't get fed, we know that. But there are some people that think that they can just solve problems and just keep it all to themselves or just, you know, like, oh, I don't have to tell anyone, or I, 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 don't, have to, I don't have to go seek assistance, I don't have to do that, no. Like as soon as, and it's, and it's deeper than just somebody hearing you, it's about surrender. <laughs> so when you surrender, your pain and what you're going through out into the universe, the fact that you have done so allows God's grace to pour into your life is what I just heard God say. And I know it's the truth. I know it's the truth. I, I, I live it. I know it. If I'm going through something and I'm the type of person that's like, I can do this. I got, I got this. I got this. I got this. I, got this. I had to learn that, hey, not only do you need to learn how to communicate because the devil uses that, your lack of communication or your isolation as a means to continually torment you in any area of your life. It could be financial. I'm not just talking about I'm not just talking about, um, you know, mental or, or physical. I'm talking about the devil can torment you in every aspect of your life when you do not communicate what you need. 
period. God cannot, um, I shouldn't say God cannot, God has a challenge empowering you when you do not communicate your needs to other people because God uses other people as instruments to love you, to care for you, to exercise his grace and mercy upon you. And so if you are in a place where you're isolated or where you're saying, I've got this, I can do this on my own, that is a satanic thought that let's name it. Let's name it in the name of Jesus. Let's name it in the name of Jesus. That's satanic. That is satanic. I got this. I don't need anybody. Let your heart breathe. After pain, do you think that your heart needs to be suffocated? Just with you? Breathe. Mm. Mm. Okay. I understand. I understand. So you're saying your pain is coming from prison? your prison experience. It, it can come from things like that. But you have to breathe it out. Oxygenate your heart. Oxygenate your pain. Do you know keeping it in your own heart and not verbalizing it? There's breath and verbalization. Breath and air heal. Air your pain out. Air it out. It's okay. You will not pollute the world by airing out your pain. You will empower the world by airing out your pain in the name of Jesus. Because when you air out your pain, someone else will air out their pain. And be and be infilled again with new life. And be infilled again with new life in the name of Jesus. God wants you to air out your pain. Today, right now, talk to someone. This is direct, God is revealing to me um, the truth of the enemy suffocating you, suffocating you. When you have a stronghold, that's around your neck. And imagine that's around your breath. That's, that's your oxygen. That's how you breathe. And so when you are not breathing, you are not talking. And so again, that's one, not talking is a stronghold. Not talking is a stronghold. And if you're not talking because you don't have the words, start with the words that you do know. Start with the words that you do know. Start with the words that you do know. Just don't be suffocated because you don't have to be. You don't have to be. In the name of Jesus. What are you compelled to say? What are you compelled to say? Wow. You would be surprised at how powerful it would be if you just communicate it exactly how you feel, exactly how you feel. Somebody on here has a sister who is younger and she recently has experienced some, some pain. Like I'm feeling pain behind her. I'm not sure what that is or what that means, but there's pain behind her. 
and you don't know what to do. God is telling me to tell you to feel comfortable. To feel comfortable with her as she chooses to reveal her pain to you. And she may not, it may, I just immediately felt that she may not want to tell you right away. She may not want to express those feelings to you, but you need to operate in strength. You need to operate in strength for her as she comes to understand that she has an ear with you. She has an ear with you. Whoever it is, your young, whoever this is, who has a younger sister who experienced pain, be ready to be the ear of God for her in her life. In the name of Jesus. Because if you don't, it can create a ripple effect. And when people don't get the, the what I hear the Holy Spirit telling me right now is that when people don't get the ear that they need, it becomes years of torment. When people don't get the ear they need, it becomes years of torment. You don't want that to happen for your loved ones. Prevent the years of torment and downward spiraling in their life by just being the ear so that they can breathe, like we talked about, oxygenating their internal state, their chakra system, their their levels of energy. Because pain leaves a residue, it leaves a stain, it leaves hurt. And we need new life to be breathed in. In the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Sensing someone who has five kids that are, is either now or will be here on this stream and this person feels alone I see you right now having to feed about five kids on your own and you're in an apartment God is telling me you need to go talk to somebody about the pain that you are experiencing right now with a lack of means to provide for your children as soon as you open the gates to your mouth the fruits of abundance will enter because based on the law of giving and receiving you will receive sometimes you just need to give the word that's on your heart you just need to give someone knowledge about what you're going through we think giving you shall receive always has to be about giving money or giving uh, an item sometimes you just need to give people an understanding of what you're going through of what you're going through that's what you give God says that's what you give so that you can receive but if you don't give people an understanding of what you're going through it's going to be really hard for you to receive anything in the name of Jesus Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I hear God saying, that's how you go higher up. That's how you go higher up. By giving people an understanding of what's on your mind. So that so when you give people an understanding of what's on your mind, people can be resourceful to you and help you elevate what's going on in your heart and in your mind so that you can operate on a higher level at a higher vibration give people an understanding of the fruit of your soul so that God can match your fruit whatever that is with a higher source of energy 
if you do not communicate based on where you are, you don't send the signals, the vibration of your voice, the energy of your voice. It cannot vibrate and resonate with someone else who can lift you up, is what I hear God saying right now. Be the vibration that God utilizes to resonate and call someone to action in your life. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. If you're isolated in, in a, I keep seeing this woman with five kids. She's in a blue shirt. She's got like five younger kids. And she's in her home and she's like wondering how she's going to feed them. If you're in your home and you're isolated and people don't see you, sometimes people people see others with children who are suffering on the world and they just by the, the fact that they see kids involved, people wanna people wanna give and help the situation because they know that hey, there are children involved here. You want to be the type of person that is not too proud to say, I'm struggling with my kids. I'm struggling with providing even for myself and I need a hand. I hear God saying to me and revealing to me through the word that I prepared for you. Don't allow Satan to shift your attention away from God. Don't allow it. Because Satan will distract you and cause you to focus on something negative. So if the negative thought is no one's going to want to help me, no one's going to want to hear me, or people are going to think badly about me, this prevents you from communicating your needs, which will ultimately take you out of the need. Don't allow Satan to shift your energy away from God. I need some of you all to really feel that. And if you're wondering, how do I know if Satan is shifting my energy away from God? You want to ask yourself, is my energy leading me to a direction of supply? Or is my energy causing me to stay in a place of lack? That's powerful. Because God will always lead you to supply. God thoughts will always lead you to supply. Demonic thoughts will always lead you into a stronghold where you are lacking, where you are lacking breath, where you are lacking an ability to communicate, where you are lacking an ability to feel powerful enough to break free from the chain. Or go back to what you know, the demon you know. That's the devil. That's not supply. You think God is telling you, I'm not going to supply you with someone that you need to help you in whatever capacity in your life. I'm just going to send you back to the lack that you had. That's not a God thought. That's a satanic thought. Never let the enemy shift your attention away from God. If it does not direct you to supply, it is not of God. It is not of God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You want to put yourself on a high road, a high road, a high road is what I hear the Holy Spirit telling me right now. This is for someone very specific. I hear a high road. That wouldn't, that's not clearly the opposite would be a low road. So perhaps, perhaps what you know is a low road. But God wants to place you with the means 
to transport yourself on a high road. It's already there for you. I see it. And I literally see a very steep inclination, which tells me in my spirit that if you allow God to shift your attention to him, there will be a very steep increase in your life. You know, I tell you all I'm a math teacher, so I think about, you know, lines and graphs. And what I'm seeing is God, I'm, I'm seeing a road and I'm seeing, you know, you have the, the, the white marks on the road that lets you know that you're driving. I see someone in a vehicle and I see them on a very high, uh, like mountainous type of inclination which I am convinced means that if you allow God to shift your attention towards him, God is going to shoot your life up in a direction that is upright, in a direction that is towards him, in a direction that breaks boundaries, in a direction that breaks satanic strongholds, in a direction that places you above all situations and circumstances that were, that were caused by the devil that were caused by the devil. I'm still seeing this, I'm still seeing this, this car, I'm still seeing this car. And I'm, and I'm feeling a person traveling, I'm feeling a male traveling in a car. And I'm seeing God taking you up, 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 up. What this also means is that time, Versus your inclination. I'm seeing you incline in a very short amount of time. I'm seeing you incline in a very short amount of time. But God is saying you must shift your attention towards him. Babies will be fine. listen to the song all day. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. The Holy Spirit wants to stay. I always ask God, okay, God, are we closing the broadcast? No. That means another revelation is on the way. Allow God to minister to your spirit right now as we worship together. Casting no stones at anyone and taking no stones in the name of Jesus. Be lifted, be lifted, be lifted, be lifted. Thank you, Jesus. I belong to you. I
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Cast no stone. Feel the holy presence of the angels. Let them help you and guide you through this process in the name of Jesus. I want to say a prayer for you that you be able to that you may be able to identify the stones that are cast at you by the accuser those that he is using to make you feel unworthy incapable not ready not focused just not in a place of divine alignment I pray for you that you may guard yourself from attacks that are coming from your own mind because again the perfect the real purpose of this broadcast was to reveal that others stones can become your own because you can take the perspective of your enemy of your judge spiritually and so being able to identify with God's thoughts about who you are and where you are going to prevent the enemy from having a stronghold on your present and your future. We've seen evidence of the enemy having strongholds on people so much so that they are compelled to take their own lives. Just imagine the types of reoccurring thoughts that have to go through a person's mind in order for them to be compelled to take their own life. People think there's no mercy for me. There's no grace for me. There's no space for me in this dimension. That's suffocating. That's not God. God is here with us. If you so choose to focus on the life of his words, you will have life. You will have life. I just saw a big, bright, angelic light come over me as I said that. Focus on the life of God's words and you will have life no matter what circumstance you are going through. It is, a, it is as simple as that. Focus on the biblical principle that God left us in John chapter 8, which is exactly what the Holy Spirit chose for us to meditate on today. You will have life in your body. You will have life in your relationships. You will have life in your mind. You will be oxygenated, fully oxygenated, so that you may breathe new thoughts, so that you may breathe new creativity, so that you may breathe words that cause others to be attracted to you and help you through your circumstances. It only takes a breath. It only takes a breath. It only takes a breath. That is your word. That is you 
breathing them out and saying them with vulnerability, with surrender, because I reveal to you. The Holy Spirit revealed to you through me. I'll correct that. That surrendering and speaking your problems and speaking your needs. Surrendering puts you in a space of receiving. So if you're not surrendering or giving based on your words, you're not in a position to receive. And it may seem like a simple principle of the world and a simple principle in the Bible, but you will be surprised at how many strongholds the devil has on people of all walks of life because they are choosing to not articulate and breathe the words, I need help. I need help. Say it. If you don't know what to say, if you don't have the words, start there. I need help with fill in the blank. Do it. Do it. Don't worry about being judged or accused. There is a, I just heard Jesus tell me this, there is a Jesus in the world for you that will correct the atmosphere for you. Just like Jesus corrected the atmosphere of the woman when she was about to get stoned and they were convinced. But Jesus corrected the atmosphere by saying, wait, who you be? <laughs> who you be? <laughs> let the first sinless person, let, let, let the sinless person cast the first stone. There is someone out there that is going to correct your atmosphere in the name of Jesus. I feel the Holy Spirit telling it to be so deep in my spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just speak. Use your breath. Don't let your attention be shifted. Don't let your attention be shifted. Shift your attention towards God thoughts, which is surrender, which is faith, which is belief. God wants us to stay on this. This is, this is feeding somebody. This is feeding somebody. God is positioned here. He is not wanting to let go. There's somebody that's going to watch this or is watching this right now. God does not want this atmosphere to be gone. God wants this atmosphere to be sustained so that you can really feel the depth of surrender and vocalizing your pain so that you may be helped. God wants you to live is what I hear in my spirit. And for some people, that would mean literally have life in your body. Don't take your life away through suicide. For some of you, it means God wants you to have uh, a life of marriage. God wants you to have healthy relationships, whether it's spousal, whether it's uh, social. God wants you to live. God wants you to birth is what I just heard him say. So if the enemy is suffocating you, God can't birth things through you. We all have seed. Right? We, we all, whether it's physical, whether we're, we're seed, seed egg, okay, you know, <laughs> whether it's birthing uh, other physical beings or birthing ideas, birthing, I hear God saying, you know, just birthing new life. I was at school today. Would you believe I, <laughs> oh my goodness, I happened to just talk, you know, I was talking to one of the kids about Aaliyah. I was like, Oh yeah, that that's how I felt when Aaliyah died. It was and it was actually about death too. Wow, this is interesting. And I was like, do you know who that is, right? The singer Aaliyah. And the kid was like, no. <laughs> they were talking to me about something, about someone that someone that they admired had 
died. And I believe it was like a, a star. And I was like, oh yeah, that's how I felt when Aaliyah died. And they were like, I don't know who that is. And so if you're around, if you're around my age, you know who Aaliyah is. Rock the boat, rock the boat, right? But that's the thing. I am birthing new life and I am new life, but this individual is a brand new life cycle that knows nothing about the past. <laughs> and so God is birthing new innocent life in you. I just, I didn't plan on saying it like this, but this is how God is, is telling me this in my, in my mind, in, in my heart. God is birthing new life in you where you won't even remember. <laughs> The past, the pain of the past. You won't even have a recollection of it. God is going to oxygenate your heart and your environment. I hear God saying your internal environment so much that you're not going to even have a residue of the pain of the past. But it comes from you first vocalizing your need and saying you need help. Start by saying it to yourself. Start by saying it to yourself. <laughs> People crazy. <laughs> um, yes. Yes, that felt so good. God is saying, look, you think you're in pain right now? You let, you let me help you get through this phase? I'm going to put you in a position where you don't even have a recollection of the pain that you went through. It's going to be like a new life. A new life. Just like the baby. <laughs> I don't know that one. Here I am, like, oh, Aaliyah, Aaliyah died. In my heart, I'm just like, oh, my God. And my name is Aaliyah, so, you know, the singer, I was just like, that still brings pain. I can't even listen to her music right now. I feel so much pain. But the baby girl was like, I don't know who that is. <laughs> Imagine God giving you that fresh revelation. Like, I don't know that pain. I don't know that sorrow. I don't know that drug abuse. I don't know that alcohol abuse. You know, I don't know that sex addiction. I don't know um, the the cutting. I don't I don't know um, cursing people out. I don't know fighting people. I don't know beating my kids. I don't I don't know that because I have a new life in Christ. I don't even know that. I don't even know what it feels to have that. That's possible for you, and it feels good to even impart that and just say that. In this moment, in this atmosphere right now, that is possible for you in the name of Jesus. I belong to you. to you, Jesus. Thank you. I belong, I belong to you. I belong, I belong to you. You are mine. Feel the comfort that God gives. There is a supernatural comfort that God provides by just creating an atmosphere where he dwells. Set the atmosphere. Control your atmosphere. Don't let the devil try to create your try to control your atmosphere. You know they call them, they call him the prince of the air for a reason. Air. Oxygen, atmosphere, these are the things that Satan wants to dominate in order to keep you from experiencing new life, which is what God wants you to experience. A brand new, bubbly, fresh energy in life in the name of Jesus. This is for you. This is for you. This is for you. I belong to you. You are mine. Oh, I belong. Thank you, Jesus.
Thank you, Jesus. God loves this atmosphere. God loves this atmosphere. You are my apart. I belong to I belong to you. Surrender yourself to Jesus. Just surrender yourself to Jesus. Cast all fear. Cast all fear. Cast all fear. Cast all thoughts that do not lead you to supply the supply of God's love and grace, the supply of God's mercy, the supply of God's will for your life, the supply of God's divine connections in your life, the supply of God's fruits in your life, the supply of God's money in your life, the supply of God's innocence and purity in your life, the supply of God's holiness and perfection in your life. The supply of God's sinlessness in your life. The supply of God's warmth and fire in your life. The supply of God's patience in your life. The supply of God's beauty in your life and fragrance in your life. The supply of God's shine and jewel. God is talking about jewelry. The supply of God's adornment in your life. People are adornment too. When you allow God to adorn you, you will see the adoration is what Jesus just revealed in people's eyes towards you because they will see God in you. Let God adorn you so you can experience adoration from others to build yourself up on that steep road to higher dimensions in Christ. Life is going to hit every single one of you who's watching this video, a greater energy and force of life is going to hit you. I decree it in the name of Jesus. All old things shall pass. All silt that is intervening with the smoothness of God's anointing in your life will be cast away, will be cleansed away. I feel kind of drunk in the Holy Spirit right now. I'm just like in a different dimension. But I'm letting God use me and use these words to heal your heart right now. I'm seeing duality. I'm seeing duality. I'm seeing duality. So what God is telling me to choose the force of duality that is light. Choose to be a seer of light and not darkness. Choose to be a seer of light and not darkness. Let God see the darkness in times where you feel overwhelmed. Now there's gonna be times where God may give you an assignment to be in darkness, to, ca to cast light. When God uses you in darkness, it's going to be to cast light, so you're going to be carrying light always, anyway. God does, God does not ever, in my spirit, I feel this revelation. Again, I, I feel someone in a dark room, and I'm getting this revelation that even when everything around you is dark, it is to light up something on the inside of you. 
is what God just said. So when you don't see light, know that there is a constant flow of light operating on the, on the inside of you. And oftentimes, and this is powerful, God is really working. I can see why God wants us to stay on this broadcast too. Because um, God has more flow. God has more to communicate. God just said that. When you are operating in darkness, it is so that the light on the inside of you can become brighter. A, 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 a sustaining light, like a self-sustaining light. You understand when people say they've gone through so many things, they came out, they were better? The enemy robs them of that opportunity to come out of it and be better and to be lighter. <laughs> right? Because they, because the enemy knows that if you ever break out of that stronghold, you will be a light, just like me. I've been in strongholds. I have been in strongholds. I have been in strong holes, financial, for real. Career, I was confused with my career, strong holes, uh, shifting my attention. Relational, physical. I have been in the probably about every stronghold, <laughs> I'm just kidding, not every stronghold, but I've been in several strongholds to the point where I know that and I even had thoughts like, man, do I want to keep doing this? I remember telling my mom that and she was just like, Really? You had that thought? And you know, I've man, I've heard a lot of things like other people saying that, and it's just like the enemy, I can say firsthand, can really get into your mind and have you thinking things like, Do I really want to do this? Do I really want to continue on this journey? Like, this is too hard. <sighs> I've definitely had thoughts like that. So I was telling you about the person I knew earlier who had said that, you know, she thought about jumping and the, the whole reveal, like, I've had thoughts where I, I, I didn't think I'd actually do it, but I remember my life had gotten so hard for me at one point that I did think, like, man, do I, do I want to do this? Like, God, why? God, okay. All right. <laughs> like, of course, I ain't, I'm not going there, but, man. Like, this is a tough dimension. But again, what God revealed before I started to share my story was that <laughs> in those times, it's just to develop the light on the inside of you. So then when, you, when your light is developed, you become a light. Do not let the enemy rob God of an opportunity to use you as a light. Do not let that happen. No matter what you have been through, what you have done, what you have experienced, it can all be transmuted to light. Is the is the climax of this? That is the climax. God had told me you haven't gotten to your climax yet. <laughs> I'm like, okay. That is the climax. All of these things, all of the stones that have come towards you. All of the things that you have allowed yourself to experience based on your own perception of yourself. All the abuse can be converted to light. If you stay the course. If you identify and focus on God thoughts. If you focus on your problems in order to transmit them. If you Use words that heal your heart. Those three things, and I'll say them again. If you identify and focus on God thoughts, if you focus on the problem to transmute it, change it into a solution, and if you use words that heal your heart, God can take all of that pain, all of that regret, all of that suffering, all of that guilt and cause you to become a light. Because your experience is extremely useful. If 
you can look someone in the eye that's about to commit suicide and say, hey man, I had that, or hey woman, hey girl, girl, <laughs> I've been there, but I didn't let the enemy take me out. I trusted God and I let God wake me up every day and give me enough power for that day and only that day alone to get me through to the next experience. Do you know if you can look someone in the eye and say that what you're going through was me? How many souls you can heal? How many souls you can heal? In the name of Jesus. Think about it. If you just give the word. We talked about giving and receiving earlier. If you just give. The, yes, I am on Instagram. Aaliyah Connect. If you just give the word. If you just give the word. I've been there. If you just give the word, I need help. If you just give the surrender, Lord Jesus, send me something to inspire me to get to this next day as I'm having these thoughts and I'm, I'm trying to break the cycle of the enemy in my life. Give the breath of God. Give the word. Start. In the name of Jesus, this is so powerful. I belong to you. I belong. I We receive your grace, Father God. We receive your word. Thank you so much for inspiring this teaching, Father God, from John chapter 8, specifically verse 9. Please be with us, Father God, as we push forward in our week with this new life, as we communicate our needs to others, as we operate in a state of giving to receive, but also Giving to give. Giving to give. Give what you're going through to someone. They will handle it well. Let God direct you to the right person to help you transmute any dark energy that's going on in your heart. God wants to love on you through a person. God wants to provide for you through an idea in a workplace. God wants to be a supernatural supply in your life, but it's going to start with you giving something. You have to give. And the suggestion today is give your breath, give your word. You will not be disappointed. God will not forsake you or surrender you or, or God will not forsake you or surrender you so long as you surrender 
and submit to him. I look forward to coming back next week with the next broadcast. I will be listening to God, of course, to see exactly what teaching in the Bible he wants to point us to. But until I see you next week, I hope that you have a prosperous week and I will see you next week.